On today's video, we're going to talk about setting the depth when you're out fishing with your tip-ups. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors and like I said earlier, on today's video we are going to talk about setting the depth of your tip up when you're out ice fishing. Because for some of you guys that are a little bit new to tip up fishing, there's a few certain things you can do that makes life a lot easier for you when you're out on the ice. Alright, so let's say we're out on the lake, okay, and the guy at the bait shop said, hey, Put your minnow one foot off the bottom in this certain area. You want to fish this certain area? Put your minnow one foot off the bottom, and that's how everybody's catching the walleyes. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, if you have electronics, the simple way to do that is turn your electronics on, take your transducer, put it down your hole. This is our ice hole, okay? Put it down the hole, okay? You're going to get a nice uh, reading of the bottom then, okay? So you know how deep you are and you can see the bottom on your electronics. Then the next thing you can do, you can take your minnow that you got out of your minnow bucket, okay? This is a rubber minnow, all right? I would not recommend using rubber minnows on tip-ups. We'll just pretend this is a live minnow, okay? So we take our rubber minnow, put our hook in it, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop it down the hole, all right? and we're going to let it down and we should pick up that minnow on our electronics. We'll actually see it slowly going down and you know we can drop it down and with a little bit of trial and error as we're watching our electronics we can get that minnow one foot off the bottom, right? Kind of bring it up, we kind of set our uh, tip up up into the set position, we set it down, we're watching our electronics no, oh, that's that's not. Uh, it's a little bit too low. Want to pick it up a little bit? Okay. Set it again. Put it down. There. I can see the bottom, and I can see the minnow. The minnow is about one foot off the bottom. Perfect. Okay. A little bit of trial and error, and you can get that tuned in just right. Okay. So that's all well and good. We've got our tip up set. We're one foot off the bottom, just like the guy at the bait shop told us. We set it up with our electronics, you know, and of course we're going to be taking this electronics, we're going to be setting other tip-ups out, you know, that sort of thing. But what happens now, if a fish takes this tip-up, okay, it trips off, the fish takes it, of course they're going to run with it a little bit. Maybe you catch the fish, maybe you don't, okay. But either way, you're pulling this line back up, but now we're going to be setting this tip-up back down again, and of course we want to repeat what we did before. We want to get this minnow one foot off the bottom, just like before. Well, we really don't want to grab our electronics and go through the whole hassle of setting this up again. So what you want to do with all your tip-ups is you want to have some sort of line marking system. And by that I mean you want to have some kind of a marker that you can put on this line, that you can move around, that will let you repeat that same spot. Okay. Quite often, that line marking system will be a little bobber like this, okay? A lot of guys will clip a little bobber onto their line and have it like that, okay? So when they get it set up just right, they have that little bobber there. And even if a fish takes and runs and they catch the fish, they don't catch the fish, okay? They bring the line back in, they can put that bobber right back there again, okay? Set the tip up, all right? Put it back down the hole and you know you're right back in that same spot again. So kind of the trick is to have some kind of indicator, some kind of marker on your line that you can move around fairly easily, okay, 
but actually one that won't slip when you don't want it to. Okay. What happens a lot of times, uh, if you have a fish on and you're fighting that fish, your line as it goes down the hole, it does kind of come in contact with the bottom edge of the hole Okay, when you're pulling a fish in. And sometimes if this line marker is too loose on the line, it'll actually slip. It'll hang up on the bottom edge of that hole and as you're pulling the fish up, it'll kind of slip down the line and you'll lose your place. Okay, so again, like I say, the trick is have something that you can move around. Put it where you want, but something that's not going to slip when you don't want it to. Okay, and again, a lot of guys like to use these bobbers. All right, now, like on that one, you can hook the bobber up with just one end. All right, and that works okay, but it does slip a little bit easier than if you hooked it up with two ends, okay? Just like your normal summer bobber, these little bobbers actually are sold to be tip-up line markers, all right? And, but like I say, just like the summer bobber, they have a clip on each end, all right? So if you, if you hook both ends up, now it's on there pretty sturdy, okay? And it's probably not going to slip very easy if it comes in contact with the bottom edge of the hole while you're fighting a fish. But one thing that I've seen happen with these bobbers these small ones, when you do hook up both ends, when this line gets pulled kind of tight, okay, if you're fighting a little bit bigger fish or when you set the hook on a little bit bigger fish, when this line gets pulled tight, the line wants to go straight. And when that line tries to go straight, it kind of will bend these little wire clips that attach to your line on the ends, and then it will start slipping on you again real easy, just like if you only had one side hooked up. Okay, so sometimes I don't really like these little bobbers for that reason. Another thing that a lot of guys use is just a common button. And you can kind of set them up. You know, you get the right size button with the right size holes for the line that you're using. And they can work pretty good. But very similar to the bobbers, okay, when this line gets pulled really tight and it tries to go straight, okay, because you've got that line weaved through the holes in the button, if it gets pulled really tight and really straight, sometimes it can bust up the interior of the button and then it's no good, right? Now it's sliding all over the place again and you're losing your place again. Okay, so sometimes buttons don't always work the best either. Another way to do it is to just pinch on a small split shot on your line, okay? You can loosen it up, move it to where you want, once it's where you want, pinch it down tight, and, and they do stay pretty good. These do work pretty good using these split shot. What I like to use on my tip-ups for a line marker is I actually cut off the spring part on these spring-loaded clip-on bobbers that you use in the summertime. All right, I cut this part off and I use that as a line marker. Okay, and you clip it onto your line just like you would if you were using it for a bobber in the summertime. All right. And they work pretty good. They hold their place pretty good on the line, you know. You can slide them with, you know, a decent amount of pressure. They do slide, but they do hold their place pretty good. And even if the line is pulled really tight, it won't lose its place. It won't break. Uh, you know, it won't bust up like the, the little bobbers do or the buttons do. But what if we don't have electronics, okay? Then how do you set your depth? Well, quite often when I'm out ice fishing, I do have uh, my Vexilar, my electronics with me, but I very seldom use it when I'm actually setting tip-ups. I, I find it's just simpler to use one of these little clip-on weights. Maybe you guys have seen these before, you know, maybe you haven't, but all you do with this little clip-on weight is you attach it to your hook and now just for these video purposes I have this black Dacron tied directly to my hook now, if we were out fishing, I would probably have some sort of leader material, you know, some kind of mono or floral carbon there, maybe even a wire leader, that sort of thing, okay? So just for you guys that are kind of new to ice fishing, um, this really is not a common practice to have this black Dacron tip-up line tied directly to your hook. But uh, for the purpose of this video, that's what we're doing. Okay, so you clip this weight on to your hook, all right? And then... You drop that down the hole, 
all right and in this case we've got our little bobber all right and we're going to slide the line down till it hits the bottom okay right there we've got bottom so what we want to do is take our line marker and slide it right till it's right on the surface of the water okay right there the weight is on the bottom and the bobber is right on the surface okay so we've got the bobber marked where the surface is but of course we want that bait to not be right on the bottom we want it a foot off the bottom all right so we're going to take this bobber and we're going to slide it about one foot okay all right but now remember when we take this tip up and put it in the water that spool is even going a little bit further below the surface so if we're going to take this bobber and we're going to have it really close to this spool as our indication we've got to compensate for this distance okay so we've really got to move this bobber about another seven eight inches to compensate for this distance all right so now when we reel this up we've got our bobber right near the spool okay we're gonna take our weight off put our minnow on all right drop it down the hole set our tip up and now when this gets set in the water okay that bait should be about one foot off the bottom but what if we wanted to be 10 feet off the bottom you know it, it's one thing to kind of guesstimate about a foot or so or six inches that sort of thing but let's say we want to be 10 feet off the bottom you know and we don't have electronics how are we going to figure that out all right well let's say we dropped our line down right we clipped our weight onto the hook we dropped it down and we set this bobber right on the surface of the water like before okay so from the bobber to the hook that's the full water column all right and we want to take 10 feet off of that water column how are we going to do that well a, a good way to do that is to use your wingspan as a measuring tape all right for me personally take this tape measure if I spread my arms out not all the way as far as I can extend them but if I just spread them out nice and easy that's about five feet that distance okay if I take this tape measure don't go like that and my thumb is almost exactly right on five feet okay so I can use that as a measuring tape so again from this bobber to the hook is the full water column but I want to take 10 feet off of it so our bait is 10 feet off the bottom all right so I take this bobber and I just slide it along the line right there boom that's about five feet I'll move it again boom right there that's another five feet so I just took 10 feet off that water column distance so the bait should be about 10 feet off the bottom now again if I want to compensate if I want to get really technical and compensate for this distance okay I'm gonna take off another like I say six eight inches something like that and that bait is gonna be really close to ten feet off the bottom and again if you don't have electronics that's another way if you just want to figure out what depth you're in right the guy at the bait shop said hey walk out from this point and when you get into about 25 feet of water that's where you want to be fishing well if you don't have electronics that could be a little bit of a pain but what you can do drill a few holes clip on your weight drop it down okay again mark that bobber so it's right on the surface of the water your weights on the bottom mark it right there and you can just start measuring out as you pull the line out five feet ten feet fifteen like that and you can uh, come pretty darn close to finding that 25 foot mark you know just by using your wingspan as a measuring tape if you're interested in more information on tip-ups I left a link in the description below to my tip-up playlist feel free to check that out 
All right, guys. Well, I hope some of the things we talked about today help you out when you're setting the depth with your tip-ups this winter. All right. We talked about uh, the electronics, using your electronics to, to set your bait at the right depth. Okay. Um, we talked about using the uh, clip-on weights for helping you set the depth, right? And, and actually, even though I usually will have electronics with me, a lot of times I'll just use these clip-on weights. It's just simpler and easier for me. So when I'm setting my tip-ups, I'm almost always using these clip-on weights. All right, we talked about that a little bit. We talked about the different styles and types of line markers. Very important thing, you're really gonna wanna have some kind of a line marking system on your line so you have that repeatability. And we also talked about, you know, that compensation, you know, getting that bait one foot off the bottom. It's pretty easy to eyeball it, but when you get into five, ten feet off the bottom, you know, how do you measure that out? Hey, guys, you know, measure your own personal wingspan to figure out what it is, and you can use that as a measuring tape. And we also talked about make sure and compensate for the distance that this spool goes below the water line. Okay, that's very important, especially when you're, you know, when you're down and you just want, say you just want that bait six, eight inches off the bottom, well, you're definitely going to want to compensate for this, all right? Because if you don't, you're going to wind up having that bait laying right on the bottom. So, that's some of the stuff we talked about. Again, hope it helps you guys out. And remember, to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat, this is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.